Hello, this is Ju. Hey, look what I have here. I have an EMF meter from Tessman, the Hound 200, and we're going to look at this thing today. So what does an EMF meter do? Well, EMF stands for electric magnetic fields, and so this will detect the radiation or electric magnetic fields that are generated either naturally or through man-made devices. So again, these fields are all around us. And from man-made sources, they can be from, let's say, uh, microwave ovens, your cell phone, uh, induction cookers, rice cookers, your refrigerator, computers, and even power lines in your home and outside. And so many people are concerned with the amount of electromagnetic fields uh, that we generate in our environment and would like to stay away from them as much as possible. And this meter will help you detect where those hot spots are in your home. Now, this particular device is a three in one portable device, which will measure uh, electric fields, radio frequency fields, and also magnetic fields. And so looking on the side of the box, you can see that it has it, it labels three in one, all those fields. It has three access modes. It does, you can measure the peak measurements, not just the average. It has uh, visual and audio alarms and a very nice large screen. And so opening it up, it, oh, it comes in a nice little carrying case here. The device is in here and it looks like it has a pretty substantial manual. It is in, let's see, six different languages. So probably just one sixth is in uh, English here, but let's go ahead and unzip the unit. And there it is. It's in a nice little carrying case. It actually comes with three AAA batteries, which I, I assume that's how many batteries you need to run this device and you can just take it out like this and this is what the unit looks like. And so there's a lot of EMF meters out there. Again, this is a three in one, does all those three electric, magnetic, radio frequencies, etc. You can get standalone units as well that only do magnetic fields or radio uh, fields, etc. Uh, this is a um, more affordable unit. It's uh, typically under $50, uh, but you can go up to hundreds of dollars or even thousands of dollars for professional units. So uh, that's kind of the price range you're looking for. This is a more affordable unit just for the home use. And so to put in the batteries, it's just in back, little cover there. We'll go ahead and put in the three AAA batteries here. And then to turn it on, you just hit this little power button in the upper left, and there you go. You get a little uh, radiation display here. This is much more cosmetic than really functional, and it looks like it starts with a uh, magnetic field detector, as you can see there. So again, that was the power button. To turn it back off, you just kind of press it and keep it off just until it turns off, and then go ahead and Press it back on. You do hear that sound. If you want the sound off in the upper right hand button here, sound off, sound back on. So when you first turn it on, it will give you the uh, magnetic field display in uh, micro Tesla, which is a unit of uh, magnetic fields. If you hit the function button one more time, it'll change the units to milligauss, which basically there are 10 milligauss in one micro Tesla. So it's just basically moves the decimal point one over. Hitting the uh, function button again will get you to electric field measurement in volt per meter. And then hitting the function button one more time will bring you to the radio field frequencies uh, in milliwatt per meter squared. And then you could just cycle through it just by hitting the function button. It's my understanding that wherever you land on, if you turn it off, let's say at yeah, the radio frequencies, uh, it will, it should turn back on the last field you ended with. And yes, indeed, we're back to radio uh, frequencies. So let's go ahead and put it back to magnetic fields. Now up on top, you get kind of like a uh, trend display right here, which looks like it's from zero to 200. Now that, 
that um, that scale doesn't change as you change the settings. So it's just a relative scale. And let's just take a magnet. Let's see, it's, it's on macro Tesla here. Uh, I just have a little magnet right here. And as you can see, it is reading uh, a magnetic field. Now it should be in three directions. And you can see it, it kind of switches from what's safe, which is in green, to now it's over. Now what does over mean? Well, that's a good question. Let's refer to the manual. Okay, so in the manual, you'll see a table just like here that tells basically what that indicator is showing you uh, from safe over over and the different colors, green, orange, and red. And it's sort of implying everything that's uh, in this range is safe. Everything in this range is dangerous. Uh, however, we were looking at um, magnetic fields in, uh, let's just say, milligauss here. Um, and it's saying that Anything between four to 2,000 milligauss is I, apparently dangerous, but uh, looking at some of the government guidelines, it looks like occupational levels can be up to 5,000 milligauss and typical you know, home and office uh, uh, levels, they say should be typically uh, under 2,000. So basically it's saying that this is the severe level but it's all relative. So take this table with a grain of salt. Okay, so back to our meter, we we're testing this magnet here. Now you can, there is a hold button here. So if I'm reading this like this, I could hit hold and it will hold the reading that I'm in. Let's try to get a high number. There we go. And I'll hold the number which you just read. Now there's also a maximum level. So if I hit max, it will basically show you the max reading it's receiving. It kind of changes, and so that is the max button there. Now I do have this cord right here attached to a light that is on, and so just uh, again, I'm on the electric field, volts per meter, and just kind of moving it around, you can see that it is recording. So yes, indeed, it is seeing the, the electric field associated with this active cord. So technically this is not a voltmeter, but it, it uh, basically uses the same technology as a non-contact uh, volt detector. Uh, so if you have a voltmeter that can do a non-contact uh, detection, it is basically doing the same thing. Okay, so next let's try the radio frequency field indicator. Again, this is a uh, milliwatt per meter square. Now this will only, uh, this won't work for, let's say if you turn on a radio because a re radio is a receiver of ra radio frequencies. It doesn't actually admit the radio frequencies. Now, if you have a radio uh, transmitter, uh, either a walkie talkie or let's say a short wave, this will detect that. But this will also detect Wi-Fi signals in your home. So let's go ahead and find some Wi-Fi boxes and test this thing out. Okay, so I'm in my basement. Here's a Wi-Fi router and I have this uh, on and sure enough, it is detecting the signal from the Wi-Fi router. Remove it and it's gone. Bring it closer and it detects it. And here's a standalone little Wi-Fi router. And as you can see, as I get close to it, you can actually detect the Wi-Fi signal. So a lot of people are concerned about their cell phones, having their cell phones on their body all the time, holding it up to their heads, and they're con uh, concerned about all the electromagnetic fields associated with that. So let's go ahead and check. Um, let's just start with uh, the magnetic fields. Keep it on. It's not really showing much at all here. So it's not really admitting that many uh, magnetic fields. Go ahead to the elect electrical fields. Not getting much, that's for sure. It's not really seeing it at all. So let's go ahead and go to the radio waves. 
Now it should detect something at least periodically with the radio wave since this is emitting uh, satellite signals, but it really isn't. I mean, it's recording something very slight, 0 0.3, 0 0.03, 0 0.08. It's detecting it, but it's all according to this in the safe level. So I do want to try one more thing. Uh, now, a lot of people like to use personal hotspots where your, uh, your cell phone signal can actually be converted into a Wi-Fi hotspot, which you can actually uh, access either with a smart uh, pad or a, a laptop, etc. And now that should show a Wi-Fi signal. Now, uh, again, the, the hotspot is off and I'm not really seeing any radio frequencies. And so let's go ahead and turn this thing on. And sure enough, it starts reading the Wi-Fi signal, which is being produced by the phone. So if you're concerned with radio frequencies emanating from your phone, even though this is arguably still kind of low, even though this is kind of screaming at you, it's still generally a low signal, you may want to keep uh, your personal hotspot closed for much of the time. Now this is interesting, it's still screaming at me. I just shut it and it, it's still broadcasting a signal. This is very interesting. Why is it broadcasting a signal? The Wi-Fi should be off. And now it's back to normal. Well, this is interesting. Well, I learned something. So when you turn off your personal hotspot, apparently it's still broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal for maybe 10 or 20 seconds. Well, that's interesting, and I wouldn't have known that unless I had this meter. So this is another little device. This is actually a little tiny camera, and this is to either observe, uh, let's say, a baby in a baby room, or you can just use it as a security camera. And there are lots of little tiny cameras out there which actually can be uh, stuck in a room. And if you're concerned with security, let's say there's a hidden camera there, well, this device might be able to help you out. So I went ahead and uh, set it to the uh, radio signals and it is on. And let's see, and sure enough, I am getting a low. It's not that strong. I am getting a signal coming from this this camera, and this is actually sending a signal to my cell phone uh, with the image that it's coming out of. So if you're concerned with, let's say, somebody hiding a camera, this might actually be able to find those hidden cameras. Again, it doesn't seem like it's a strong signal, so you'll have to just look around, but this might be able to find hidden cameras. So a lot of people are concerned with microwaves. Sometimes they think, is my microwave operating uh, properly, is the seal working, etc. So uh, we do have the microwave powered on. Uh, it's not actually running, but we have it at, let's say this is the magnetic field. I'm not really receiving anything. Switch it to the electric field. I am receiving like an orange signal here. Uh, there is power going to this unit, so that makes sense. It's not that high. Let's go ahead and do radio frequencies and I'm really not receiving anything. So let's go ahead and turn this uh, back to uh, magnetic fields and see what happens when we turn this thing on. And sure enough, it's starting to generate a red magnetic field. So there you go. The microwave does generate a magnetic field. Uh, go ahead with electrical fields. Again, it's kind of in the orange range similar to what we had before. And then the radio frequencies is just going off the chart. It's all excited. Sure enough, it's now generating a um, uh, radio frequencies are coming out of this microwave, which makes sense because microwaves are essentially the type of radio frequency. And there you go. That is the Testman EMF meter, the Hound 200. 
Uh, it seems to work okay. Um, I wouldn't really get too excited about it uh, buzzing really loudly. It's all relative. It, it really depended on what you feel comfortable with. What I would recommend using this for is if you're concerned with electric magnetic fields in your home, you can use this to get a relative sense of where the hot spots are. If those hot spots are on high traffic areas or where you sit for long periods of time, you may want to move, let's say, a Wi-Fi router, etc., to a different location. Uh, if you're concerned, let's say, with a baby room, you can uh, sense the baby room uh, as well. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you did, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen and even consider subscribing to my channel. I have many more videos to come. Bye-bye.